an evening game of billiards. A simple game and gathering in a rural Ugandan village. Not possible before, before the light from a single bulb. The village of Katembe is 180 miles southwest of Kampala, Uganda's capital, and several miles from the Rwandan border, home to a few hundred men, women, and children, most in families eking out a subsistence living. There's no way somebody who has, you know, kids, uh, doesn't really have a job that pays him more than 2,000 or uh, 4,000 Uganda shillings a day, which would be a dollar to two dollars a day. There's no way somebody's going to afford that power. That power from the national grid and the lines that run over their heads. Brian M. Osendi. Brian Osendi is a 2011 St. Thomas graduate Brian. whose mother grew up in the village and whose grandmother still lives there. I always had this dream to bring power to my mom's village. A dream born at night during a rainstorm. And it was so dark that I could not see the road. Now, what I would do is I would actually pause on the road and wait for lightning. When the lightning would strike, I would see the road. He also saw a way to help. It didn't have to be, you know, running washing machines or cooking or anything, you know, just a simple thing as giving light so that people can do things at night. Using the sun's power was Osendi's simple plan to bring light to Katembe. I used eight solar panels. The panels charge four batteries, conducting electricity through 6,500 feet of wire to... 46 homes, uh, a school, and uh, two health centers that we wired, or two clinics. All of us were just open and, and waiting to find out what adventure we had started ourselves on. Molly Rolfsmeyer, wife of engineering professor John Abraham, was one of 15 volunteers from the St. Thomas community who did the work. You can see where it comes in, splices here and runs in through this ventilation. And then there's a switch that's, that's in each room that there's a bulb in. There's a switch for each bulb. Years of dreaming, months of planning, a week of installation, and at 7 p.m., January 12, 2011, they flipped the switch. To me, it was like the biggest thing at that moment. And then everybody was happy, everybody was clapping, the volunteers, the village, everybody. There was a great sense of community. All the people came out and they stayed up really late, <laughs> enjoying all these new, these new lights. It was a big party. <laughs> to those who raise families and run shops, it's more than a party. Businesses have sprouted. The community is much safer because of the security lights. The community is so much more vibrant right now. <laughs> we all got to really enjoy getting to know the people, being allowed into their homes, seeing how they lived, and seeing the change that, that 40 watts of light can bring. As we're walking away, you get on top of a hill and you can see the trading center. And there's like all this darkness around and just this stream of lights. Somewhere, you know, a kid can now go study at night. <laughs>